G'day everyone, in this video we will continue to build upon our interaction system which we made in the last video. If you haven't seen that video yet, make sure to check it out because we will be using the scripts that we created there. If you have, then let's jump straight into it. In this video, we're going to set up a way to create basic interactions without writing any code. To do this, we're going to include the use of Unity events in our interactions. If you've ever worked with UI buttons before, then you'll be familiar with Unity events. If not, I'll quickly explain what they are. So if I add a new button into the scene, over in the inspector, we can scroll down and see a section here called on click. This is an example of a Unity event. We can hit the plus button here and that'll pop up a spot for us to drag in a game object. So let's drag in our keypad. And then using this drop down menu here, we've got access to all of the components on the game object. Furthermore, we've got access to all of the functions inside of those scripts. So we can call the base interact function on our keypad. And then when we play and click the button, you can see that the door opens. Keeping in mind though, a Unity event is only compatible with functions that have either no parameters or just a single parameter. So we'll stop playing there, we'll delete the button, and let's head into our scripts folder. We'll create a new c -sharp script called interaction event. This will be the second easiest script that we're going to make in this course. At the top, we want to make sure that we are using Unity engine dot events. And we want to have a public Unity event. And we can call this on interact. We'll remove start and update. And that is all we need to do in this script. So we'll head back into Unity and we'll open up our interactable script. Up the top here, we just want to have a public bool called use events. And we're going to use this to add or remove an interaction event component to this game object. So we'll save that. We'll head back into Unity and we're going to create our first editor script. This is just going to be some really basic stuff. So if you're not familiar with writing custom editors, that's okay. Just follow along and I'll do my best to explain as we go. So we'll head into the assets folder and we'll create a new folder called editor. An editor is one of those folder names that Unity reserves for special cases. So make sure that there's no spelling errors in this name. Inside this folder, we'll create a new C-sharp script called interactable editor. So a custom editor allows us to change how our scripts appear in the inspector by replacing the default layout with one that we write ourselves. If you think about things like ProBuilder and the post-processing stack, the way these assets look and function is made possible with editor scripts. We won't be doing anything as fancy as that though. So the first thing we want to do is remove all of these usings and replace them with using Unity Editor. We also want to inherit from editor as well. Just above where the class is declared, in square braces we want to type custom editor, type of, and this is going to be of type interactable. Then we can pass in a boolean value of true. And this means that this editor script will also affect child classes of our interactable. So because we're inheriting from editor, we've got access to override a bunch of new functions. So we want to override the oninspector GUI function. And this function gets called every time Unity updates the editor interface. This base.oninspector GUI will draw our interactable component how it appears with no modification. So we're going to leave that there for now. And then just above that, we want to store an instance of our interactable script. So we'll create a new interactable and call it interactable with a lowercase i. And we'll set this to equal target. Now target is another variable that we have access to because we're inheriting from editor. And target is the currently selected game object that we are inspecting. So we've got an error here and that's because target is of type object and we just need to cast it to an interactable. So now underneath that, we want to check if our interactable is using events. And if it is, then we want to add on a interaction event component. So we can just type in interactable.gameObject.add component interaction event. But if we run this now, then every time the inspector updates, it's going to add another component. In fact, I'll show you what it looks like. So if we head to our keypad game object and we select use events, 
oh, we can see how many interaction event components have been added. That's not quite the functionality that we're after. So we'll head back into the script and before adding the component, we want to do a null check. So if interactable dot get component interaction event is equal to null, then we want to add the component interaction event. And we'll do the reverse for when we want to remove the component. So if interactable dot use events else, we want to do if interactable dot get component interaction event is not equal to null. That means we do have the component on there. We want to destroy immediate interactable dot get component interaction event. Awesome. So now if I save that and head back into unity, we can see that the bool is not checked and it has deleted all of those interaction event components. Now, if we click it again, we just get a single component. And if we uncheck it, it gets deleted. Perfect. Now back in our interactable script, let's head down to our base interact function and we'll add in if use events, then we want to get component interaction event dot on interact dot invoke. Now, if everything is correct, because we're using an editor script to add the interaction event component, this value here should never be null. Also, our interaction function will always be called. This means that we can include code inside of our inherited interactable scripts, as well as using events. Keeping in mind the order though, the way I've got this set up, the events will always run first and the interaction function will always run second. You can set up an enum and a switch statement to have better control over the order that these get called in, but most of the time the order won't be an issue. So I'll save that and I'll head back into Unity. And now if I click use events on our keypad, we've got our little drop down section. We can add in a game object. So let's add in one half of the door. And to test this out, we'll go to mesh renderer and we'll make the material a glowing color. So now if I walk up to the keypad, click on the door, we can see that the door opens as well as the material has changed. So we've got both types of functionality working. Now let's create a version of the interactable class that doesn't have any custom code. We'll design it to work purely with events. That way, if we have any interactables that we know will only need some basic functionality, then setting it up will only take a fraction of the time and we won't need anywhere near as many scripts. So back in the scripts folder, we'll create the easiest script that we'll make in this course. And we'll call this event only interactable. And what we want to do in here is remove the usings at the top, remove start and update and make this inherit from interactable. There we go. Nice and easy. Now we'll head back into our interactable editor script just above the base on inspector GUI. We want to check to see if our target dot get type is equal to type of event only interactable. Then we'll add an else at the end of that and we'll wrap everything else that we've written. So notice that this first block here doesn't have the base dot on inspector GUI function. This means our component will be completely blank and we will need to manually create our prompt message field. So let's do that now. We can type in interactable dot prompt message is equal to editor GUI layout dot text field. And the first parameter we want to type in is the label. So we'll put in prompt message. And the second parameter is the value we're assigning this to. So that will be interactable dot prompt message. Now, because we know this is going to be an event only interactable, we don't need to display the use events Boolean. Instead, what we can do is type in editor GUI layout dot help box. And in here, we'll put in a helpful message event only interactable can only use unity events. And for the second parameter, we can pass in message type. And we've got four different options here. We've got error, info, none, and warning. This will just change the icon that displays with our message. So for this, I'm going to pass in message type dot info. 
Next, we want to check to see if the game object doesn't have the component on it yet. So if interactable dot get component interaction event is equal to null, then we want to set interactable dot use events equal to true. Then we want to add on the interaction event component. So now I'll save that and head back into Unity. I'll create a new cube and we'll pop on the event only interactable. And notice that we've got the prompt message here where we can type in what displays on the screen. We've got our little helpful message, event only interact can only use Unity events. And we've automatically added our extra component. And the cool thing about Unity events is that we can stack as many events as we want. So we'll make one half of the door pink, the other half of the door blue, and we'll turn off the game object that we just interacted with. Before we test it out, we'll add the cube to our interactable layer. We'll hit play. Now, when we approach the cube, we get our message designed using events. And if we interact with it, all three of those things happen. And we designed that in no time at all. So I hope you can see how powerful this system is. We can easily create dozens of interactions in a matter of minutes. So go forth and make those games feel alive. Make everything interactable. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And the next topic we're going to talk about will be enemy AI. But before that, we're going to have a quick video where we implement the health bar made in this video here and adapt it to work with our first person game. If you haven't seen that video already, you can follow along with that until the next part comes out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.